Hey y'all, welcome back to the Black History Show. My name is Jamal and I'm the class of 24 at Chief South. Hi, my name is Jamal and I'm a senior here at Chief South. Uh, you guys already know, I'm double O, you know, slow motion, you feel me? My name is Ocean Freeman, class of 2024. And my name is Devin, class of 24. If you may not know, sadly we are coming to the end of our show and today will be our last episode. As you all have seen in our past episodes, we've taken the time to inform you on HBCUs and red lighting. On today's episode, we'll be focusing less on informing you on the issues that affect the black community, but instead spotlighting and giving acknowledgments on staff members, students, and folks that have shown perseverance and courage. Today, I wanted to acknowledge a person. Her name is Sojourner Truth. Sojourner Truth was an abolitionist from 1797 to 1883. Truth was born into slavery with her infant daughter and escaped slavery. Sojourner Truth became an outspoken advocate for abolition, temperance, and civil and women's rights in the 19th century. In 1843, she declared that the Spirit called on her to preach the truth, changing her name to Sojourner Truth. Garrison's anti-slavery organization encouraged Truth to give speeches about evil and slavery. For my first acknowledgement, I'll be recognizing Alana Temple, and she's been working at Self for four years now. Alana Temple is a college and career counselor, and you know, when you hear that, I know it's easy to assume she'd only be taking her time to work with seniors, but the special thing about Alana is that she goes out of her way to engage and build bonds with underclassmen and take the time to understand each student's situation. The first person I would like to recognize is Colin Kaepernick. He was born November 3rd, 1987. He is 35 years old right now. He took a knee during the national anthem for the injustice of black people. What's fascinating about Colin Kaepernick is that he was one of, one of the best QBs in the NFL at the time. And he put his life and job at risk to prove a point to get justice for black people. Also, Colin Kaepernick made his own show. It blew up and made people realize what black people have to go through. The show is called Colin Black and White. Colin in Black and White, you know. You know, Colin in Black and White. Uh, also, Colin Kaepernick said that he'll pay for a second autopsy, which can show a real case of someone's death. For my spot of acknowledgement, I'm introducing Garrett Augustus Morgan. What did he do? Garrett was born on March 4th, 1877 in Pierce, Kentucky. He moved around quite a few times to where he ended up in Cleveland, Ohio. He worked as a sewing machine or pyramid until 12 years later when he accumulated enough money to begin his own business. He was also a wealthy man over the next few years while also expanding his business. What did Garrett invent? Garrett was always interested in his adventures. His business was equipped with machines that he personally designed. During the 1910s through the 1920s, he continued to invent new items, mainly safe, safety in the streets and the workplace. Students at Self need to know about this because this is an important black role model that should be talked about. She fought for others' lives back in time to get us where we are now. Students at Self need to get to know Alana because not only will she connect you with others to open up new opportunities for you, but you'll gain someone who's always going to support you. Colin Kaepernick made a great sacrifice. Their sacrifice made the world a better place. Gear was most famous for patenting the first traffic signal in the United States. He created a traffic signal after he saw an automobile crash. His traffic signal was mounted on a T-shaped pole with three signals, stop, go, stop in all directions. My second spotlight will be on Coach Rich. He is a South alumni, was the C-team basketball coach my freshman year, and is now the head coach of the bas boys' basketball program. The reason why I'm acknowledging Coach Rich is because he's big on giving back to his community and making students have a sense of belonging, especially within his basketball program. Mayor Rustin was an activist who organized the 1908 march to Washington, D.C. Mayor Rustin was also led to protests to in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and he was also in the 1963 march. Bingyard Rustin was a key advisor for the Montgomery bus boycott. 
Mayor Russell became involved with the gay rights movement. He was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. During the basketball season, I was having a hard time making a decision on where I'll be taking my education to for the next four years. And with the basketball program that Coach Rich is making his own, I've learned that if you have community or feel that you belong to one, the hardest part is leaving. But if you have a true community, no matter where you go, it will always be here. Hello guys, my name is Devin. Welcome to episode three. And today I'm here with... Celine. Uh, all right, so we're, I'm just gonna get straight to the uh, questions. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm a senior at Chief Self International High School. I wrestle. Um, I'm third in the state in my weight class, which is 155. Um, I manage for baseball, and I'm a pretty much an outgoing person. You know, I love to read. Um, walks outside. I'm pretty adventurous. I like to think of myself. Yeah. All so. right. That's, that's good. And the second question is, what does wrestling do for you? What does wrestling do for me? Um, wrestling does a lot for me. It kind of keeps me on track with, like, school mm -hmm. and, like, keeps me in sort of a nice little, I wouldn't say a box, but just on track and, dang, we need to pause it. Mm. Cut this part out, okay? <laughs> Let me think for a second. <laughs> wrestling uh, kind of keeps me in check with like school in a sense you know it keeps me motivated to come to school and do my best that I can and also keeps me like a good routine because I pretty much wake up go to school go to practice you know so I'm just like in a simple routine that I do every day um, it also helps me like really be confident in myself, you know? Um, I think that sport is like an amazing sport. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you need to be pushed mentally or physically, that's definitely something that you would want to do. All right, that's good to hear. The third question is, what do you what do you think you bring to the wrestling team? Um, what do I bring to the wrestling team? Like, you, I, you say skill-wise, anyway. I bring a lot of leadership to the team. Um, I'm a captain, a co-captain of the wrestling team. So that's probably one of the things. I bring a lot of like skill, happiness. You know, I'm a very upbringing, bright person. Um, and I love making people around me happy and joyful. So I feel like, you know, just being a positive person, I always bring positivity around everywhere I go. Um, yeah, and a lot of leadership, I'd say. All right, the last question is, why should students do activities and sports in, um, involving in like school, around school and stuff? Well, again, like I said, wrestling keeps me on track with school. And if you're someone that like kind of struggles with motivating yourself to want to go to school and do good, mm -hmm. you know, having a sport that you love and is very passionate about definitely adds to that and kind of makes you like want to go to school and, you know, yeah, wrestling, it it's amazing, you know, and other sports too, you know, basketball, softball, baseball, track, you know. As long as you have that sort of structure within the sport, I feel like it would definitely bring structure outside of the sport and within your life um, and school as well. Um, yeah, you know, so if you're looking for, you know, a family, like, setting with people around you should definitely try to do a sport you know because with me the wrestling team we are we're a family we're not just a team we're a family you know if there's problems within the wrestling team you know we're always going to be one step ahead trying to figure out what we can do to solve that issue or that problem that may occur um so i think that you know again if you want to do a sport and you're looking for something sort of like a family you should definitely join the wrestling team unfortunately i'm a senior so i'm going to be graduating but you know I definitely feel like, you know, it's it's up there. It's up there. Exactly. Yeah. All right. That's all from Devin and Celine. Right. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Melly. Bro, why can I not see color on my screen? Like, I know this is a good tackle and all, but like, bro, it's irritating. Bro, peep this. Bro, I can't see color either. Bro, bro. Let me see. You see this? I cannot see color. Bro.
This is gray and white, black and white. I don't know, but like, bro, it's irritating me. <laughs> oh, <my God. coughs> the yeah, I feel <laughs> weird, but did you know somebody black did this? This is the Gigahertz chip. The Gigahertz chip was created by an African-American inventor named Mark Dean. The Gigahertz chip brought color to all of your technology you know today. Your computer screens, your phone screens, and your TV screens. He was born in Jeremiah, Tennessee, and became the first African-American to reach IBM Fellow, which, if you didn't know what that is, it is the highest level of technological excellency at his company. Yeah, this is Mr. Black Lake Nicholas. I just want to apologize to my Jewish community. I made a statement in, my, in our last episode. Um, it was mindful, but I'll be mindful in the future because if a man makes a mistake, you need to correct it. And I'm a man, so I'm asking for forgiveness. Let's move on. Thank you. Welcome to the last episode of Black History Month, that Black History Month show. My name is Devin, a.k.a. The Last Man. Warrior. And I'm here with... <laughs> Warrior. And I'm here with... Mr. Nick, the Black Knight Nicholas. All right, I'm just going to jump in right to the questions. Can you remind us about... I mean, can you remind us about your advice on saving money from your last interview? Yes, um, I suggest that you make saving your number one priority. Exactly. And I suggest trying to save 25% when you're starting off. And along with that is your expenses, you want to keep them to a minimum of 41% of your total income. Mm -hmm. The other thing is always pay yourself first. And what I mean by that, like whenever I got paid or whenever I get paid, I treat myself to a meal. Reward yourself first, then the other actions. All right, the second question is, what is today's focus going to be about? Credit cards and um, real estate. All right. How should we overcome uh, financial challenges with, like, income, like, just credit cards? And okay, like yeah. That? First thing with credit cards, I suggest if Number one thing is blacks and Latinos, men, 54% have a credit score of 525. <laughs> and what that does is you're paying so much interest on everything. We're already getting taxed at the grocery stores. And we tax ourselves when we don't manage a credit card. Credit's number one. I, I would have good credit than $2 million, to be honest. It's important to keep our, your credit good. Very important. And the number one thing I would say about um, credit cards is that some people are able to pay it off, everything off every month because you get benefits and also as you pay it off they see not only your worthiness but they always increase you. But the same results you can get it, you only spend 25% say if you get a $500, say you got 100 bucks, you spend $25 of it, you know. And then if you got 500, that's 100 bucks. Don't go over that limit. Because what happens with most minorities, and the one 54% I'm talking about, is that when they unable to pay the 500, now their credit score is down to that 525. The average African American credit score is about um, 677. That's okay, you know what I mean? Some people will say it's kind of good. But when you're thinking about purchasing home and stuff, the better your credit is, the lower the interest rate going to be. That's what's up. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all from Devin. That's it for the Black Knight. Yes, sir. Okay, today I'm here with... Miss Miskell. Okay, so the first couple questions are, finish this lyric. At 7 o'clock, where's Usher? In the hotel room. <laughs> no, wrong. Um, don't go chasing. Butterflies. Um, this one is for the boys with the booming system. Is, is that the end of the sentence? No. I don't know. Okay. Um, what ins amendment ended enslavement? The 
14? No, but close. 19? 13. Oh. Um, that's it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> who, uh, I'm here with... Maisie. And who is Rosa Parks? Oh my gosh, she was the African-American woman that said that she wouldn't sit in the back of the bus. And she said no to the white lady that was like, get to the back of the bus. There we go, boo. Um, what's your favorite black superhero? Oh, um, we read about this in uh, ELA. Her name is Sojourner Mullen, and she's a Green Lantern. She's okay. <laughs> um, what amendment in its enslavement? Ended, oh, um, okay, can I call a friend? <laughs> no. I'm going to say the 13th. Uh, there we go. You're smart. Okay, now I got to hit you with a music question. Okay, okay. This is going to be really embarrassing. Um, This one's for the boys with the booming system. Top Town AC with the something. Cool cool Look, we got to give her that he one. Got sex on deck like he's saving up. And he, he, he pop photos and he got the right kind of build. Okay, okay, you passed. Good job. Okay, today I'm here with Maddie. Okay, so this is finish the lyric. This one is for the boys with the booming system. Top down AC with the coolest system. There you go. It's 7 o'clock on the dot. Where's Usher? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't go chasing. Butterflies. Wait. I told you I wasn't good at this. <laughs> no, I don't like you. I just thought you were. Cool. Okay, we'll go to the history. Yes, maybe that would be better. What amendment ended enslavement? The 13th Amendment. There you go. Today I'm here with Deja. Okay. Who is your favorite black superhero? Black superhero? Black Lightning. Okay. What amendment ended enslavement? Wait, say that again? What amendment Edit ended, ended enslavement. Like, I know this. Repeat that question. <laughs> <laughs> what amendment ended enslavement? The Thirteenth Amendment. Good job. Okay. <laughs> Give <her> the answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's seven o'clock. Where's Usher? Wait, 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 give me a second. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the song lyric, right? Yes, yeah. finish the line. Is it? Wait. <laughs> it's seven o'clock on, on the, the dark. dark. Wait, that's, wait, I'm supposed to like finish the whole line? Yes. You got five seconds. Five? Wait, 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 I give up. Okay, next one. Brown skin girl. Is this a Beyonce saying? Brown skin girl, skin just like pearls. Best thing in the world. I never <laughs> trade you for anybody else. Okay. Okay. Today I'm here with Miss Alexis. Okay. I got some questions for you. This one is finish the line. It's seven o'clock. Where's Usher? Seven o'clock on the dot. I'm in my drop top, cruising the streets. Only person that's answered that correctly. <laughs> Um, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Can you work with it? Wait, put your thing down, flip it and reverse it. Is that it? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Um, I don't know the jingle. No, I don't like you. I thought you were, I just thought you were cool. Frank Ocean. No, I don't like, I know that song. It's, um... I don't know the lyric to it, but I know the song. I know the song. Uh, this. No. Not Novocaine. This one is for the boys with the booming system. 
This one is for the boys with the booming system. Top down AC no. with the cooling system. When we come up in the club, we be blazing up. Got stacks on deck like I'm saving up. <laughs> yeah, don't get me started on that one. Um, what amendment ended enslavement? Don't ask me no history questions. <laughs> I'm not a teacher. I don't know. Um, I should know that, but I don't know. Um, Which is it? 13. Now we know. Um, what's your favorite black superhero? Honestly, I didn't really watch cartoons. We'll say um, um, Black Panther. That's it. Thank you, Alexis. You're welcome. I'm here with Miss Rotto. It's 7 o'clock. Where's Usher? Is it a.m. or p.m.? It doesn't matter. It's 7 o'clock. Where's Usher? <laughs> He's in that crib. <laughs> How do you Mr. Weiss say the same thing? Next. I'm sorry, but you got that wrong. Where is he? It's 7 o'clock on the dot. I'm in my drop top cruising the streets. Okay. Oh yeah, I have to. Um, is it worth it? Let me work it. I put my. Oh no, no, keep oh. going, keep going. I no, I'm done. <laughs> um, don't go chasing. What? Don't go chasing. Waterfalls, duh. Thank you. Um, no, I don't like you. I just thought you were cute, ugly, fugly, rich. <laughs> Emilio is the answer. <laughs> I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer to that one. Which song is this? I don't like Frank Ocean. Oh, oh, Frank Ocean. So I guess we all got that wrong. A tornado flew around. Oh, we should have did that. We should have just did that one because I was confused too. Okay, we're going to give you that one because. That was not hard? No. No. Um, no. One more music one. I put a spell on you. And now you're mine. Period. Who is it by? The spell people. <laughs> Witches. <laughs> Witches and warlocks, kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nina Simone. Oh, Nina. Oh, that's what it's, oh sorry, Nina. Um, um. How long is it? Who is Angela Davis? The Angela Davis? Yeah. The best actor of all time. Okay. No, she's not an actor. Um, she is a scholar, a abolitionist. She is amazing. She writes about prison abolition and reform. She's a professor. She's a black woman. She is Isn't she dead? <laughs> no. She's not. <laughs> All right. Uh, my name is Efra Prasaha, CEO of Brown of Boom Boom Coffee. Welcome to my space here in Renton. Uh, this cafe has uh, been open since uh, January 2019. Uh, we have a full cafe space up there, and then we roast all of our coffee over here. Uh, we source nothing but uh, African coffee, so this one right here is from Uganda. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, uh, we, we carry many different types of coffees, we make a lot of drinks. It's a community space. We love uh, to see all of you incredible South students, which I am fortunate to say I am an alumni of. Uh, here at our space in Renton, but we also have one on 12th and James and then one opening up at the UW bookstore. So yeah, go Hawks. Welcome back to episode three. My name is Devin and today I'm here with Bill, that would be the guru. Guru. All right, we're just gonna get straight to the questions. What's your connection with Bill Russell? Of course I heard about Bill Russell uh, from the Boston Celtics. And so I go over to him and I said, man, can I have your autograph? No kid, I don't get my autograph. I'm like, why not? You don't need my autograph. But I want to be like you. I want to be in the NBA. I want to be just like you, Mr. Russell. And he was like, son, get your education. Be, do something with your life. You, know, you can play basketball, get, get your education, and do something for, your, for the black community. And he walked off. And that was the extent of my conversation with Bill Russell uh, for my life. But and he coached for the Sonics. 
uh, from 1973 to 77, and he had an impact on my life, um, being the first black coach in the NBA, and also being an 11-time NBA champion. All right, the second question is, how did Bill Russell like impact your life, mentally, physically? For me, the reason why I can coach, and any black man can coach, because he was the first black coach in the NBA, mm -hmm. and, you know, that itself set a set a, a chain of events for all of us blacks to succeed. You know, he's the reason why I was a coach. You know, he's a Jackie Robinson of basketball mm -hmm. because here we had a, a, a black man who went through so much. You know, on the road couldn't eat, couldn't eat with his team in the restaurants and had to eat in the back door, had to eat in the kitchen, and had to endure racial slurs and all these things and keep a cool head and. You know, every black man couldn't have done that at that time. Um, so his basketball impact, to me, was really big for us. Sir. Yeah. All right, the last and final question is, what else should students know about Bill Russell? I think what students should know about Bill Russell was he was more than a basketball player. Mm -hmm. um, he was an activist. He was a civil rights activist. You know, he marched with, with black people. Uh, um, the March on Washington with Dr. King, you know, he fought for Megar Evers, and there was two, you know, there was two, there was two instances in Bill Russell's life that pushed him to succeed. We had all this anger and, and all this frustration that he wanted to show the world and he, and he wanted to vent through basketball and be successful, and that was Emmett Till was murdered uh, for whistling at a white woman, mm -hmm. um, and then Rosa Parks on the bus, you know. I, to get off the bus, couldn't sit, couldn't sit in the back of the bus, you know, was forced to sit in the back of the bus, couldn't sit in the front of the bus. Mm -hmm. Those two things, you know, really pushed him to want to be something in his life. You know, his dad was a generation or two removed from slavery, so he, he grew up in a tough time. And, you know, those kind of people weren't supposed to make it, but Bill was determined to make it, and his family left the Jim Crow South Louisiana and moved up to West Oakland. Uh, to get better opportunities um, during the World War II. Mm -hmm. And he lived in Boston, Reading, he, the suburbs of Boston when he got there, and they didn't want him to be there. And he would go on the road, and his wife would hear people at the windows and the garbage cans, and they would, you know, destroy their car and do all these mean things and light crosses on their, on, on, on their yard and throw rocks at his window and scare his family. And Bill would, would go to the police and complain, and, you know, what's going on? And, so he went and got him a gun license, okay? And once he did that, it all stopped. But the, the moral of that story is, three or four years later, Reading, Boston Reading, they did a, uh, had a Bill Russell day. We had this town, which is one of the most segregated towns in, in, in the United States at that time, Boston, having a, 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 a Bill Russell day, a black man day, it was unheard of. And, you know, just a man can take all this, you know, hate. all this hate, great, all this, all this hate and all this, you know, backlash and still be humble and be gracious. And that's, you know, that's why he's a, he, he's, he's, he's a special man in my eye. That's why he's, he's a, you know, ground break, barrier breaker in my eyes. Well, that's all from today. That's all from me, Devin, and... I'm the basketball guru, Bill Ellaby. Guru. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate all you guys. Peace. You and I T Y. You and I T Y. That's a unity. You and I T Y. DJ G. You and I. Yeah, I go on and on. Tap 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 in. I must have superpowers. Tap 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 in. Get a calculator, do the math. Tap 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 in. And for the last three hundred months, I made.